Hi, it's Chris with Bernice of the Rockies, and in this video, this is part two of our kennel training series of Do You Need a Crate? Do You Need a Kennel? Let's talk about it. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching the official Bernese of the Rockies YouTube channel, the place to be if you love all things Bernese Mountain Dogs. And in this educational series, this we're talking about dog kennels and dog crates and if you even need one. Um, because at the end of the day, you have to make a decision if you know you want to use one. So uh, last week we kind of talked about kind of the basics about what a kennel and a crate is. Um, but this week we're going to talk about security and reason why you'd want to use a kennel or a crate. So um, you know, last time before, you know, obviously, you know, we have, you know, carriers and, uh, you know, things like this. And, uh, you know, we also have, you know, uh, like wire uh, kennels and crates. Um, again, everybody calls them something different. So, again, this is probably more of a carrier because it has a handle. But, I mean, it depends on how big of a dog you have. You know, if you have a Yorkie, I mean, this is like a mansion, you know. I mean, if you have a Bernese Mountain Dog, I mean, this is what you put their toys in. I mean, this is, yeah. I mean, so it's one of those things where... I truly like kennels and crates because it, there's a safety factor that goes along with this because if you go to work, for example, and you know you don't want your dog just running around the house, you need to put them somewhere safe. And so if you work with them right away and let them know that, hey, this place is your home away from home kind of thing. So although they're in your house, you're saying, hey, you know, this is for you to feel comfortable and safe. And there's a few different varieties here, so I'll kind of touch base on a few things. So if you have dogs already and you're bringing home a puppy, um, I really like uh, the kind of carriers and kennels and stuff that have um, something solid on the side because you can use the wire ones with maybe like a blanket or something over, you know, the, you know, the corners or sides, um, not the front. I mean, you want the dog to be able to get in and out. Um, but what's kind of nice is when they're they're around the sides a little bit, it kind of gives them a sense of like a cave almost, you know, where they have a little bit of um, privacy. Um, so say other dogs are coming up to them, you know, maybe they don't notice them as much because there's a little bit of, you know, like a security screen, you know. Um, but, you know, again, uh, you know, because if they're in like a wire kennel or crate and it's completely open, and if you have dogs just surrounding them, of course, that's going to really probably stress them out and, uh, you know, not make their... Uh, you know, welcome home, a very good experience. So again, if you go to work, um, you know, you have to put your dog somewhere. And, you know, if you put your dog, you know, say you have an eight or nine week old puppy and you put it outside, there's a good chance your puppy's not going to be there when you get home. Now, granted, everybody's environment's different. So this is not like a one size fits all. But I mean, you're, you're, you know, you're facing things possibly as, you know, a puppy getting through a hole that you didn't know existed. Um, you're looking at possible theft, which is very common. Um, you know, if somebody knows you have a puppy, they know it's very expensive, and, uh, you know, uh, that puppy may not be there when you get home. Um, also, depending on where you live, you have wildlife. Um, so this could be anything from, I mean, I'm not a science person, but it could be, you know, anything from like badgers and, and uh, you know, coyotes and uh, owls. I've heard of, you know, picking up uh, smaller dogs, but, um, you know, anything can happen. Um, you could also have stray animals um, who jump over your fence to attack your dog. Um, and so there, there's definitely some, you know, areas where if you could, you know, have a safe environment indoors, then you know when you're at work, you don't have to worry about, you know, little Fluffy being okay. So, of course, with, you know, if you go to work and you don't have to, you know, make sure you keep in mind how long you're going to be gone or how long the puppy is going to be away. Now, granted, if you, you know, are in school full time, you work full time and the puppy is going to be in a kennel for 22 out of 24 hours a day, I would highly suggest that you don't get a puppy right now. That's just me saying, just saying, hey, but, uh, you know, if, if it's something where you go to work, normal job, or maybe you're blessed, like, you know, a lot of people where you work from home, um, then there's not much of a concern. But, you know, if it's something where you work a normal, like eight hour day. Uh, maybe have a travel time each way, you know, just kind of keep things in, you know, in, in perspective because, you know, I mean, you don't want your dog living in a kennel his whole life, you know, um, and unfortunately there are some that do. And so, um, you know, if you can kind of figure how much food and water your dog's going to need, um, some people are against food, which is fine. 
because if you're on a certain feeding schedule, you might say, okay, I feed in the mornings, I feed at this time, and then I feed at nighttime or whatever, that's completely fine. But of course your dog needs water. So make sure there's a lot of fresh water um, and, and in an, a way that the dog can't tip it over. So if this means, um, you know, figuring out whatever situation is gonna work best for you so that the dog always has fresh, clean water as much as possible um, because you know you want them to stay hydrated and uh, you know to have a good quality of life while you're, you're away so this also goes to work for bedtime now I, I joke with people that there's like a textbook and then there's like reality of how things work so you bring home your new puppy and you put them in their you know carrier in their kennel and they have toys and everything's great and honky dory but 15 minutes later the puppy's still crying and and uh, you feel bad and so oh, you're like oh my baby's crying and so uh, you know, you let them out of the kennel, they sleep in your bed, and it's the rest of the life. That's just, you know, how things work. Of course, sometimes that's reality for people, um, but a lot of times that's not ideal for people. So, imagine when you go to bed at nighttime, you know, little Fluffy is running around the house, and, uh, you know, they get into, like, you know, cleaners. You know, they start, if you have children, they might be chewing on, uh, you know, toys and, you know, building sets and action figures. Um, they could be, you know, pennies, quarters, nickel, dimes, marbles. Um, if you have, um, you know, parrots, for example, um, you know, a lot of parrots are notorious for, you know, throwing out stuff out of their food bowls. So kind of think in your mind what are the animals there are in the house. And so um, these are things that your dog may uh, get a hold of. And we, you know, we've seen these experiences before where, um, you know, a bird or something will throw out like a nut that it doesn't like and a puppy eats it and gets lodged in their stomach and uh, it's a horrible thing. I mean, that could be death, you know? I mean, it's just, unfortunately, it's how it is. So the purpose of having these kind of systems that are in place is for the safety and security of your dog. Um, and, and so, you know, at nighttime, if you can, you know, keep them in something where they're not running around the house, um, they could chew on electrical cords and then get electrical shock. Um, again, they can get into your cleaners. Um, they can eat clothes. I mean, I've, I've, had, I've heard of dogs, <laughs> you know, eating clothes, you know, where you're like, hey, where'd all my socks go? And then next thing you know, you see them going to the bathroom, you're like, hey, what is that? Um, and it's the same kind of concept. Um, imagine Christmas time. A lot of times people think, oh, I'm gonna get a puppy for Christmas. Puppies will chew on, you know, the Christmas icicle stuff you put on, you know, trees. Um, they'll chew on anything and everything because they're learning about life through their teeth and through their smell and things like this. And so, um, this is not inhumane. This is saying, hey, you know what? I care about my dog. You know, I want them to be safe. I want them to be secure. And uh, we're, we want to make sure that they're happy and healthy because, you know, a Bernese Mountain Dog especially, you have an amazing life with a Bernese Mountain Dog. I mean, for me, I will never be without a Bernese Mountain Dog because, you know, it's kind of like once a burner, always a burner. You feel the love and the compassion with these dogs. And when they look at you with their big brown eyes, you see their soul. I kid you not. I mean, you can have the worst day ever, you know, at work. You come home, your dog puts their paw on your leg and they say, hey, mom and dad, uh, I love you. And and this is the thing that they they wear their heart and their fur. And, and uh, it's an amazing relationship. For security reasons, I recommend some sort of, you know, something. Now, Grant, you might have a special room where you're like, okay, this is strictly for my dog. And maybe it has, you know, four walls, tile, you know, good, you know, maybe an epoxy floor where you can't get like bacteria and things like this. Um, but again, it's the little things. They'll find the little things. So even if you're like, oh, I'll just put them in the laundry room. They'll be fine. I can mop it up if they have an accent or put newspaper down. They will get bored and they will find anything they can chew on. And so, again, you know, you know, these are not bad systems to go with. It's just depending on what you want to do to make things as easy as possible. So again, thank you for watching, uh, you know, this episode of Bernice of the Rockies TV. Um, next week, we're going to talk about potty training a little bit. So we're going to talk about how I use these to potty train my dogs. And it really works really great because, um, again, you know, we know that they're safe and we know that they're secure. So now we need to work on potty training. I mean, if we're going to do this, why not kind of, you know, do a few other things with it that's going to grow that bond between um, you and your dog. So one quick note too, if you're a subscriber of these shows, we're gonna be moving strictly to Fridays. Now, before we had two episodes a week um, that we kind of answer questions and stuff, we're gonna to try to jam pack everything into one great episode each week. So um, starting here in a couple weeks, we're gonna go straight to Burner Fan Fridays. So with BFF, it's gonna be 
education, some fun, and uh, answering your questions um, because it's one of those things where a lot of these questions I get, you know, are, are, you know, I'll get like, you know, 50 questions about the same thing. So I really want to be able to focus on the quality of these videos and make them, you know, as educational as I can instead of just doing, you know, a two minute video here and whatever here. Um, so again, you'll see that if you're a subscriber, um, you know, kind of, you know, change maybe your, uh, you know, viewing a little bit, but um, yeah, so we're going to go to Friday's coming up soon. So just BFF, Burner Fan Friday, I think this will be a great time. So again, if you like these videos or if you love Bernese Mountain Dogs or if you can kind of tolerate me a little bit, um, please consider subscribing. Um, we, again, you know, we'll have these videos once a week, um, brand new videos every Friday. And, uh, you know, we're here for you. If you can send me questions, if you like, at questions at BerniseOfTheRockies.com. And I'll answer your question if you're looking to adopt a Bernese Mountain Dog puppy. Maybe you have questions about puppy training, about dog food, about health, nutrition, grooming, anything. Uh, we're going to be uh, here to help you with all of your Bernese Mountain Dog needs. So until next time, hug your dog and be blessed.